Man, so it looks like we got another dumb organization. Why in the world are you going to drop a young QB just to bench him? At that point, you could use that uh, asset on like an uh, offensive lineman, defensive lineman, anything else besides a QB if you're just going to go the very QB role. This does not make no sense. Once again, why the coach decided to bench Anthony Richardson yes, uh, well, actually today um, in favor of Joe Flacco because they feel like Joe Flacco is giving the best chance to win, which that statement or that phrase really irritates me. The best chance to win should not exist when you're trying to develop a young QB. And guess what? This has happened in the past where young QB struggled in their rookie season, but guess what? They got the chance to work through it, and guess what? They end up becoming all-time great quarterbacks. So I just don't understand the decision from the Carolina Panthers. Uh, the video already been made weeks ago. I will link it in the description and why I thought that was a bad decision from the Carolina Panthers to bid Bryce Young in favor of Andy Dalton in the favor of trying to win games. Even though sit Andy Dalton being the starter, they also been losing games just as, just as bad. They just lost to Commanders not too long ago, forty to seven. And the Panthers literally looked all right when they played the Broncos. Of course, Bryce and Knuckles is as good as folks think against the Broncos' defense. is one of the best in the league. If you were expecting that, I, don't, I just don't know what to tell you. But, yeah, they look competent enough. Then we go to the Colts game. Bro, after looking at the film, like, like from the stats, of course it's not going to look good. But from the film, from the film, these receivers are struggling to get open. What in the like? In what situation would any QB would thrive in that situation? What like tell me because you have two receivers of the same archetype basically in Michael Pippen Jr. and Alec Pierce. The fact that one of them is your Z receiver does not make no sense because they don't have the juice to actually like. Let's say they have somebody in motion, right? That's the Z. And yeah, somebody in motion, you know, who is he threatening? Because they, because from the Titans game I watched, Josh Down is their slot receiver, and he's literally the best receiver out of this group because of how he can, first of all, his route running is the best on the team. His speed and burst, the best on the team. And the fact that he's the only person that has those two qualities and they not, he's not relying on the jump ball situation, and he, he, he can also do that as well because that's the reason why I want him in Tennessee. But, no, I'm not going to get into that. But, yeah, that, he's literally the complete receiver on their team. Alec Pierce, Michael Pittman, they were jump ball receivers. And then it was moments in the game, they, the ball was just hitting them in the hand. They were just not making the play. Um, or they just didn't have the speed to create enough separation to even make the play on the ball. So, yeah, uh, this was not a good decision from the coach at all. So, what makes this interesting, we all know Peyton Manning rookie season when he threw 26 touchdowns, 28 picks. Peyton Manning himself won the Pat McAfee show, or oh, I forgot what show it was, and he is he explained why the Kiwis today do not have the chance to develop whatsoever. And if he was playing today's game, they would literally bench him the same way they bench Anthony Richardson and the same way they bench Bryce Young. I like Drake May. McCarthy's going to be a good player. So is Penix. But these guys that are starting this year, right, just Bo, uh, uh, Daniels, and Williams, if they struggle early, Leave him in there. Don't take him out. Because that's the only way you're going to get to 28 interceptions. Plus, that's how you learn. Leave him in there. <laughs> learn how not to throw that fourth interception. But you take him out, I'm just telling you, you don't learn as much. So, hey, anyway, Peyton, Peyton, uh, Peyton, real question. Hey, real question. It's definitely going to be one of, always a debated topic, Pat. Um, you know, Mahomes sits behind Alex Smith and then. Obviously, the rest is history and what he's done. Uh, Aaron behind Brett. Jordan Love behind Aaron. Eli sat for 10 behind Kurt Warner and then started the last six. And I guess that's where my answer kind of comes from in the fact that Eli just said what he learned in those six that he played compared to what he learned backing up Hall of Fame Kurt Warner, uh, who was playing. He, he said it was night and day. So I'm just about getting them in there, let them figure out how fast these guys move. 
look, C.J. Stroud didn't seem to have a problem with it, right? He hit the ground running. So maybe, you know, maybe I was just that bad as a rookie. But I think you get in there and play. You figure it out faster. You learn not not to repeat those mistakes. You learn these defensive guys get paid a lot, Pat. Sometimes they're covered. You have to throw it away. It took me a whole season to learn that, that, oh, Oh, I didn't know you were allowed to throw it away. I thought you had to throw it up into double coverage. So uh, <laughs> I like these teams that have those rookies in there uh, and, and to get them in there. And I appreciate you mentioned uh, the man, the, uh, the musical. I just got to say. You just saw that clip. So it, besides Peyton Manning, by the way, Troy Aikman, he had a bad rookie season. He threw nine tests and 18 picks. Terry Brass, Brassaw, <laughs> he threw six tests and 24 picks. These are Super Bowl champions, all-time great quarterbacks, struggled in their rookie season, but ended up bouncing back after like getting their rookie season to the Ville, and guess what? We seen what happened. So I just I just I truly feel for these QBs nowadays. Do they don't even have the full season to fully develop. They give them a reset. What what is a reset gonna do? As a QB, as a shoot, as a player on a basketball team, as a player, like you need reps no matter what sport you play in. You're not getting no better on the bench. If you're not hurt, if you're not uh what you call it, not starting from the gate, like Anthony Richardson was, okay, that's understandable. But he went from starting to going to the bench. Bryce Young went from starting, going to the bench. And he was posting the Tennessee Titans fan base when Will Levin pinched. It's like, are, are you good? If, like, these guys, I know these last two weeks, I bet you're not saying that no more. <laughs> because guess what? Mason Rudolph is not it. He's just a primary back of QB. So, I just don't, I just don't understand why folks just want to bench young QBs in favor of very QBs just to be 89, miss the playoff potentially, and then Oh well, we tried for putting. You don't get nothing from it because you stuck your growth for your young QB. Um, prioritizing wing over developing a QB is just stupid to me as an organization. Like this is not just a coach. It's got to be said from the front office, like the GM and the owner too. That's stupid. Why would you drive a QB like that? But uh, I talk long enough. Um, uh, I just, I this not it. This not it. These QBs need to develop. They they develop in a in back in two thousand. Why in the world in a in a in an environment? We live in an environment where we need to prioritize development. And it's just we are going backwards. We 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 not even developing the QBs no more. We bench them after a uh, rough patch. They don't even give two full seasons no more. And he got Andy Richardson got ten NFL starts and he already benched. Oh, bro. Well, that's all I got for for today's video. Hopefully, you guys like, comment, subscribe. This is your boy Trail, and I'm out.